Hello, 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 hello. What's up, what's up, my people? This is Coach Michelle coming to you from the ATL. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If this is your first time, thank you, thank you, thank you. Make sure you subscribe, click and turn on the notifications by hitting that bell and like this video if you find value in it. And of course, those of you that are coming back, you already know I love, love, love you and I'm glad you are here. Thank you for rolling with a sister. So today's video is about, let's see, number six. I have a client that has long-term care insurance. Does she pay me upfront or do I contact the insurance company for her? That's a really great question, guys. So you have two options when you're working with someone with long-term insurance. And, and let me just deviate for a moment. Those of you that are trying to figure out how do you become a provider with long-term insurance, a lot of things have changed. So based on my experience and understanding, they're no longer going through a credentialing process for the long-term insurance. Once you provide services for um, one of their subscribers or members, then of course you would be in their system because they will request specific information from you. So they will be able to pay you. Just wanted to throw that out there because I know one of you were going to jot that down in the comments below as a question. So you have two options. So the first one is assignment of benefits, meaning that you're going to get paid directly from the insurance company. So you're going to connect with the insurance company. The client is going to give you um, the information. You're going to call. You're going to ask for provider relations. And once you speak to someone in provider relations, then they will walk you through what that looks like. You need to, you know, find out what their turnaround time is, right? So are they going to pay you once a week? You know, not often. Are they going to pay you once a week, once a month, once every 60, 90, 120 days? That's really important, guys. A lot of you want to accept all insurances that pay for home care services, which is great. That's what we said. However, you have to have money available, Right. So many times you've heard me say you don't have to have all this money set aside for payroll. However, that's with private pay because your client is going to pay you up front, which means you have money to pay your caregivers. So you don't have to have an enormous amount of money to start this business. However, if you are working with an insurance company, I don't care what insurance company it is, you will have to have funds available for payroll because they all pay you differently. Again, it could be monthly, it could be every 90 days, whatever it may be. So you want to make sure you get a clear understanding of what that process is, the claims process, what they need from you, how often you can submit your claims, how often they're going to reimburse you for providing services. Really, really important. So that's called an assignment of benefits. The second option is what I love. <laughs> I promote this all the time. Meaning your client is going to pay you because they reimburse the, their subscriber much faster than they reimburse the provider. I'm just here to let you know that. So I suggest having the client pay you if they are able to, and then you give the client a weekly paid invoice that they can submit, meaning the family, loved one, client, whomever, can submit to their long-term insurance company and get reimbursed. It usually works out really great that way. And again, they get reimbursed much faster than the insurance company reimbursing the provider. So that's the way I like it. You can let me know if you're accepting long-term insurance and which way you're doing it. Are you doing an assignment of benefit and or are you being paid directly from the client? So um, some of the things to think about when you're working with long-term insurance companies is you need to find out what they want on that invoice, aka claim that you're sending in so you could be paid. Some of them want it itemized with every single task that was done. Some of them are okay with an overview. Some of them want the the, the um, hours broken down per line item, like if you're using QuickBooks per line item, is really, really important to make sure you understand because the last thing you would want is to work with someone and you're and they tell you up front, the insurance company tell you up front that we pay every 90 days and now you submitted a claim and when they got to your claim, it was not the way they wanted. It was incorrect based on their requirements. And guess what? Now you have to re fix it and resubmit 
and it may put you back in that wait period again, or they may say, okay, we were waiting on this and then they will go ahead and process it. I don't know what that is because we made sure that we always adhere to their rules because we want to be paid. How many of you are doing this nonprofit? If you are for profit, put in the comments, hashtag for profit. And if you are for profit, you want to make sure that you're getting your revenue is coming in and you're getting paid on time because you are doing exactly what they want you to do, right? Let's see if there's another part to this. Nope, that's it. Oh, this, yes, there is a second part. Do I contact the insurance company for her? Not really. So the client needs to contact their insurance company, long-term care company, because they need to activate it. Meaning, hey, Mr. You know, customer service representative for ABC long-term care, I would like to use my benefit. Because sometimes there's a waiting period. Sometimes there's a prereq where you have to already be providing, excuse me, um, receiving services in the home. So sometimes there's things that the consumer has to do, the subscriber member has to do in order to activate in quotes. And there's no such thing as really activate, like you got to call and activate it. But when I say activate, mean call and initiate, start say, hey, I want to utilize these benefits that I've been paying for. So definitely the consumer should call first because they're not going to give you information anyway. If you call, um, you know, they, they're not going to give you information on someone's account. And of course, you wouldn't want them to give information on your account, right? So um, what you can do when you go out to the client's home for that initial visit, the, um, the client, well, at that time, it's the potential client, can call the insurance company. And then that way you can be there. You can hear what they have to say. You can ask questions and things like that. And lastly, you can ask the potential client to look at her policy. Because if you scroll through and you get to the page that talks about the benefit, it'll say, you know, home care, personal care, personal support, or whatever that policy may call it, it'll tell you how much that person is granted, how much they have with their policy on a day-to-day -day basis. So it may say, you know, X amount of $100 per day to be used for in-home care. You'll see other stuff, benefits for, um, you know, different type of facilities and things like that. You only need to be concerned with the home care portion, meaning because you're going to be providing services in the home. You don't need to worry about anything else. Now, say the services that you're providing is $300 a day and their benefit only allows for 200 and you are, you know, going to be paid directly from the insurance company, you still will bill the client for that um, remaining amount, right? So if you're charging $300 a day, they only have 200 The $100, you would bill the client directly and the client would pay you via, you know, whatever you accept, whatever method of payments. But for us, we accepted credit cards, debit cards, checking account, savings account, meaning ACH, we never ever, and I don't recommend cash app or cash. I don't recommend those. Now, people are using Zelle. Many banks like my bank doesn't have Zelle for business. So I would not necessarily say that's an option. I personally wouldn't accept that unless it was like, hey, you owe <laughs> and you need to pay kind of thing. But that would not be a method of payment that I would have in my agreement. I would do credit card, debit card, ACH, meaning they're paying by checking or savings account. Guys, let me know if you have any comments, questions, concerns. Let me know, you know, what you guys are doing and I will see you on the next video. Before you go, this is the second video today. So before you go, make sure you like this video, turn on your notifications and definitely subscribe. So you guys take care. God bless. And if you want more information, find out how I can help you start and grow your business, definitely check me out on myhomecarecoach.com. I have an amazing, amazing team um, administratively and also instructors um, in our VIP hybrid 2.0 program. So you guys take care. God bless. And I will see you on the third video. Take care. Bye.